It was December 2004 when we travelled to America to meet up with one of the most extraordinary athletes we've ever come across. Kyle Maynard was then an 18-year-old wrestler at the University of Georgia, and his story was one that we were privileged to tell. You know, the way that I approach life is just to, uh, you know, to be normal, in a sense that you know, there's nothing that's going to stop me. That you know, anyone, if anyone else can do it, then I'm going to be able to do it too, and I'm going to find a way. My whole life has been a pursuit of normalcy. And I think that everybody engages in some you know, type of normalcy in their life just because you know, we want to be accepted by people around us. We want to, uh, you know, me especially, you know, I may look physically different and you know, my challenges that I face in life are a little bit more apparent to other people, but I think that other people you know, may face challenges on the inside. Kyle was born with congenital amputation, a rare disorder which left him without fully developed limbs. His family were faced with a choice, always to make allowances for his condition or just get on with life. For Scott and Anita and their three younger daughters, there was only one way to go. We always try to encourage him to try new things and uh, to do what he could do. The world really isn't set up for Kyle and um, he does things a little bit differently than a lot of other people. So um, he just wanted to make sure that he always had the ability to to, to take care of himself. Right from the start, <laughs> Kyle was encouraged to fend for himself. His way of doing things may have been different, but he got them done. Everything, it seems, except for one little problem. He struggles with buttons, you know. <laughs> you know, so he doesn't wear shirts with buttons, a lot of shirts with buttons. Kyle played street hockey, baseball, and American football growing up. He got great grades, dated pretty girls, and played practical jokes, like the time he was at the beach with some friends when they covered him in tomato sauce and pretended he was the victim of a shark attack. Kyle's got it easy. It may not look that way to you, but um, wow, there's some, some people out there that are dealing with really tough stuff, you know? And um, so when he was born, we did not know what he would be able to do. And um, he fascinates us every day of his life. Wow. Kyle began wrestling competitively in sixth grade, encouraged by his father. But it was a tough introduction to the sport. He lost his first 35 competitive bouts. I did uh, you know, have to work so hard, harder than my opponents, to actually progress to a level where I was going to eventually be able to defeat them. And I went for a year and a half without you know, any, you know, any win, you know, anything to hold on to. But I did have one goal that I decided to, uh, decided to set for myself, and I maintained it. And I've maintained it to this day. It was to never be pinned. By working on his strength, fitness, and mental approach harder than anyone else, Kyle overcame what might have seemed an impossible challenge. Wrestling without the regular tools used to grip opponents. Along with his high school coach, Kyle invented moves like the jawbreaker and buzzsaw, designed to take full advantage of his physique and power, even against the heavier opponents he regularly faced for the University of Georgia. You have to get past his strength because uh, he is really strong. Uh, he's one of the strongest people I know, and he's definitely stronger than me, mentally and physically. And mentally is a big part of wrestling. He doesn't want to be treated any differently, and you can tell that by the way he works with us. He thinks of himself as a normal person, and uh, you better too, because if you treat him um, like you have to go easy on him, he's going to punish you. Uh, he lets you know on the wrestling mat um, just how good he is. Kyle's power stunned us. In the university gym, we saw how, with specially adapted chains and leather loops, he could lift around 200 kilos. If there's a problem, there's a solution. And that's the way that I've always looked at life. I don't like to focus on the word disability because I think it's limiting. I like to focus on ability. I think that everybody has ability, and I think that you know as long as you focus on that, 
then uh, you know you're just able to uh, accomplish so much more just because your attitude's you know so much more positive and strong. Back in 2004, Kyle's approach to life had already won him considerable celebrity in America, and spending time around him meant quickly forgetting the supposed differences that marked him out from other students on the UGA campus. He'd quickly settled into college life in Athens, an hour's drive from his family home near Atlanta. Mum made a weekly laundry run, but apart from that standard requirement for most male students, he was on his own. His then girlfriend, Elizabeth, was at school in far off New York State, but with a typing speed of 50 words per minute, Kyle kept in touch easily enough. A few weeks prior to our visit, Kyle had appeared on one of America's top chat shows. His typing ability soon came in useful, as a few days after the show, he received over a thousand emails, including one from a man who said he was on the point of committing suicide before he heard Kyle's take on life. People always ask, you know, how, how could God have done something like this to Kyle? And, um, you know, we, we believe that, um, and if you were around Kyle enough, you would see how he impacts the lives of people. And, uh, you know, what I, um, my thoughts on that are that it's not a curse, it's a blessing. You know, it's a blessing from God for him to have the ability to impact and inspire and encourage the people that he, that he comes across. We discovered how Kyle's TV appearance had also allowed him to publicize one of his projects at the time, finding an SUV that could be adapted to accommodate a wheelchair. He'd passed his driving test with some adapted controls on his parents' minivan and had set his heart on getting a customized SUV. Soon after our visit, we heard that Kyle had persuaded the Ford Motor Company to help him out. It's nice. Awesome. In the months following our trip to Georgia, Kyle became so busy with motivational speaking that he left college to focus fully on giving speeches to a wide audience. And today, aged 28, he works for the Washington Speakers Bureau. Kyle has also written a best-selling autobiography called No Excuses. As far as his sporting pursuits were concerned, Kyle went on to train as a mixed martial arts fighter and made his MMA debut in 2009, losing on a judge's decision. Two years ago, this extraordinary man became the first quadruple amputee to climb Mount Kilimanjaro without assistance by crawling all 19,340 feet. The purpose of his climb was to send a message to the world that no obstacle is too great to overcome. On the inside, you know, I'm a fighter. You know, whether it's any challenge, I just want to, uh, you know, obliterate it. And, you know, it's a common misconception that I'm a nice guy because when I'm on the wrestling mat, then, you know, it's no fun for my opponent. You know, I'm going to try to make it as physical as possible. You know, once you've wrestled, everything else in life becomes easy. And that's the honest truth because there's no, you know, there's no trial that I faced outside of the sport that's been tougher than something that I faced inside of it.